Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today TV. And today we get to talk about my least favorite topic to talk about in an interview, <laughs> especially with a woman. <laughs> it's a three-letter word. Uh, and it starts the title of her book, uh, Sex, Jesus, and the Conversations the Church Forgot. Mo Isom. Good to have you here. <laughs> Don't seem so excited. Uh, you know, we'll talk about this in a minute, but I got to yeah. at least talk about what we were talking about before we kicked off this interview, because you're like soccer phenom. I was. Yep. I like, loved it. So you still hold the record for the most shutouts in a season at LSU? I goal? do. Goal I think keeper? I hold almost all of the records at LSU. <laughs> yeah. And the number three record for shutouts in the SEC. In the SEC, mm -hmm. which is a tough, tough division. It is. It so. is. But yeah, that was all youth growing up and then into college playing um, is a Bayou Bengal. I was at LSU and um, loved it. I loved my soccer career. Had some really neat, neat moments in there. Why did you not continue that? Because I actually spent my fifth year of eligibility at LSU training with and trying out for the men's football team as a place kicker. And so after committing that much time and effort towards football, uh, it would have been a big shift back to soccer. And honestly, when I was finishing up, the only real opportunities for females were to go overseas and play yeah. or to be um, on the national team. Yeah. And so I saw other goals I had and loved my, my time playing yeah. soccer, but was Common for co focus. college athletes, actually. Yeah, to, yeah. To love the sport, but then to go want to go do something else. Isn't you know, it? the greatest gift soccer gave me was a college education. That scholarship that got me that education was... Um, important and and I was excited to kind of flex those those muscles and find that new space as yeah. as a woman. So and now you're out there talking about sex. Yep. What How went did we wrong jump there? <laughs> yeah. What, what went wrong? How do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um it's neat because God really um he just transformed my life in a really radical way in college. Mm. So while I had this huge soccer platform and you know was in and out with the national team and um, all American on the on the college field. There was just so much going on in life behind closed doors. You know, I had grown up struggling with identity issues and an eating disorder and mm. kind of kept all of that in the darkness and then, you know, came off to college and after my freshman year lost my dad to suicide and mm. started wrestling with depression and anxiety and promiscuity and after my sophomore year was headed home for Thanksgiving break and and God just encountered me in a very bold way. I was really just at the end of my rope. You know, praised on the surface because of these athletic successes. Sure. But in my heart, just at the end of my rope, depressed, anxious, suicidal thoughts, just struggling. And it was in that broken place that I was headed home um, on the interstate and lost control of my vehicle and uh, flipped my Jeep three times and wrapped it around a tree. And it was hanging upside down in a ravine mm. that um, the Holy Spirit just met me in a really powerful way and transformed my life completely just downloaded the reality and the depth of the gospel into my heart. And it brought me to life. And so, you know, not only did my life change completely, but my sexual struggles had really paralleled so much of my life in brokenness and in struggle. Um, there was a lot of sexual deviance and promiscuity and just a lack of understanding about sex as a whole. And when Christ entered the equation, it renewed my mind and it transformed my heart. And I began to understand this beautiful gift God had given us, um, this act of worship, really, this weapon against the enemy within marriage, that he'd given us this great instruction around sex, and that he was this incredible God who redeemed our brokenness, you know, and our, our broken sexual testimonies. And so it was this great collision of God doing a lot in my heart and my mind, and I just became passionate about speaking that truth, because um, it's really transformative. And it... Uh, Coming from the um, one with a, a list a mile long, it was it was transformative mm -hmm. to no redemption, mm -hmm. and I, I want people to know that hope and that healing. That's really good because it, as as I kind of alluded to when we started this, you know, I, I grew up in an environment where you did not talk about this. There's this, yeah. There's even though we say yeah, it's right within a marriage. Mm -hmm. There's almost this shame that goes with it. Right. It's like yeah, I mean, it's okay if you're married, but it's still kind of dirty. Right. 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 Yeah, which is just so off. It's one thing that really stirred a passion in me to speak about these things because it is the church has, uh, I feel like, and I mean the body of Christ as a whole, we haven't known how to navigate the conversations right. or we've thrown out the to-do list of right and wrong, do this, don't do that, or we've shamed it so much that then what, we're expecting people to say, I do at the altar and suddenly flip a switch and, you know, understand sexuality as a whole <laughs> right. in this beautiful right. way. But when I went to scripture... 
I saw that God had so much to say about sex. In fact, the first conversation he has with man involves sex. So to speak about sex is to look more like the one who created it. He commissioned our identity and our purpose. Go, be productive, be fruitful, rule over this kingdom and multiply. He spoke about life in this way. And then you see God, the the one who used Rahab the prostitute in the lineage of Jesus Christ. You see Jesus, the one who sits with the Samaritan woman, the whore, for lack of a better word, at the well and offers her living water. You see him um, with the adulteress and he doesn't cast a stone. He says, in response to my great love and mercy, go and sin no more. So we see kingdoms rise and fall in scripture around sex. Yet the church is quiet about it. And I'm like, this is a narrative all through the word. And it's something God has to say a lot about. And so I wanted to unpack that and make it relevant to how that kind of fleshes out in our lives and the struggles that we deal with and what God has to say about them. So so what do you say to that person, guy or girl, it kind of really doesn't matter, who's made a lot of mistakes, Yeah. who, who has either acted on or had a lot of thoughts or they're addicted to pornography or they're whatever. But yeah. because of their experience with sex and sexuality, they are afraid that, that God hates them, mm. that they don't fit in the church, that they can't tell anybody what they really think. Right. What do, what do you say to that person? You know, it's amazing how the enemy uses sexual sin really specifically um, in a powerful way with shame. We are silenced by shame. And around sexual sin, we're just certain we're the only ones having these dark, twisted thoughts or, you know, struggling in this capacity. We're just shamed, shamed, shamed by these strangleholds in our life. Um, but what I would say to that person is that no temptation that's overcome you is uncommon to man. In fact, the vast majority in some capacity are wrestling with some type of sexual sin or lack of sexual understanding or bondage and hurt from their past or abuse. It's, it's the vast majority of us. And when we allow the enemy to silence us with shame, we, we forget the power that um, speaking something to life, that confessing, that having open conversation, that facilitating conversation um, frees us with. I mean, there's beautiful accountability. There's beautiful connection that we all share. And what's really not even a male issue or a female issue, it's an issue of the heart. Mm -hmm. And God cares deeply for heart transformation. So the sooner we begin talking about this stuff, the sooner we begin realizing we're not alone in what we're wrestling with. I think the sooner it grows past behavior modification and then shame if you can't measure up or, you know, repercussions that are, you know, from your past, it moves past behavior modification and it steps into heart transformation. And when heart transformation takes place, that's what changes everything. And that's what God cares most deeply about. Absolutely. How's the response to your book? It's been amazing. Has it been good? This is what's been incredible about it. So as a female, I wrote, you know, inherently with females in mind, I'm writing to women. But what's been so amazing to see is not only the great age spread this has reached, because it moves through my sexual testimony from eight years old with my first exposure to pornography to 28 now into marriage. So it moves through this, you know, this whole narrative. And so it reaches many different areas, young, single, you know, engaged, married, divorced, broken, or, or whole and really haven't walked through all of this. But what I've loved too is that it's reached men. Mm-hmm. I've heard from so many men saying, you know, first off, thank you for writing this and helping even my understanding, but now I understand my wife better. Mm-hmm. Or now I, I know how to have these conversations with my kids, mm-hmm. or I know what my children are up against in this world. Because the book's raw and it's real and it doesn't <laughs> hold any punches on what this world is shoving down our throats, to be honest. I mean, we're inundated. But it's been amazing to hear from this wide stretch, young and old, women and men, who I don't even think I realized when I wrote it how hungry they were to just have this tool, have this equipment, and have these conversations. Mm -hmm. And to strip the taboo feeling off of it and to recognize, oh yeah, God invented this. (laughs) And um, it's actually a gift, and his gifts are never meant to be burdensome or shameful. But he, he gives great instruction around them. So... Yeah, it's, it's good, been exciting to see good the response. Good for you. Thanks for the, yeah. the courage and the conversation. What's the web, website for people that want to get a hold of the book? MoIsom.com. There it is on the screen. Super easy. Check it out. Check out the book. Learn how to have the conversation. And if you want to hear more conversations, you can hear Mo talking to my parents 
on the broadcast show of Life Today that's available at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.